Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this is part four on photosynthesis. And in this video cast, we're going to focus on the structure of the chloroplast itself and how this structure allows it to perform chemiosmosis, very similarly to what happens inside of a mitochondrion when mitochondria do aerobic respiration. Now, if we look at a mitochondrion close up, if you guys remember, a mitochondria Okay, it has an outer membrane, and then the inner membrane is folded up into these stacks of things called thylakoids. All right, and the thylakoids, of course, are connected to each other. Here's a picture right here, and the thylakoid membrane is what's dark green. That's where the chlorophyll is actually located. So what we're going to do is we're going to look very closely at the membrane that separates the thylakoid space on the inside from the material on the outside, which is called the matrix. All right, so, or excuse me, called the stroma, excuse me. In a chloroplast, the filling is called stroma. All right, so this gray part here is stroma. All right, and if we look closely at this, you can see that this is where the electron transport chain proteins are actually located. And what happens is the photosystems are activated by light. So here's photosystem two and here's photosystem one. Okay, the light causes electrons to be excited, so they jump to a higher energy level and then fall and move their way through the electron transport chain. And as they move through photosystem two, all right, hydrogen ions are being pumped from the stroma into the thylakoid space. So here are the hydrogen ions being pumped inward. So the inside of the thylakoid is becoming concentrated with hydrogen ions, all right? And then here's photosystem one, which gets the electron. It gets bumped to a higher energy level again by another photon of light. And finally, that electron is being picked up by NADPH. So that's where the electron is ending up. But the point of all this is, as the electrons move between the photosystems, okay, they are causing hydrogen ions to be concentrated inside the thylakoid space. All right. Now, just as we saw in mitochondria, this concentration of hydrogen ions is a form of potential energy. And these hydrogen ions can then backflow back out into the stroma by passing through ATP synthase, just like we saw in the mitochondrion when we were looking at chemiosmosis there. And the passage of the hydrogen ions down their concentration gradient from where there's a lot of them to where there's not many of them is what's generating ATP. Because remember, ATP synthase has that rotor structure, so it turns like a little merry-go-round. And that physical kinetic energy of the rotation is used to phosphorylate ATP. All right. Now, the ATP and the NADPH that's been produced is going to go to the Calvin cycle, where carbon is going to be fixed. And we'll talk about that in a future um, video cast. All right. Now, comparing this setup to what you saw in mitochondria, in mitochondria, the hydrogen ions were being pumped from the inside out. In chemiosmosis in a chloroplast, they're be being pumped inward. Okay, so it's in the opposite direction. So just to review that, ATP synthase is functioning because hydrogen ions are flowing from the innermost area outward in a chloroplast, but in mitochondria, they're flowing from the outside back in, so it's the opposite direction. So chloroplasts and mitochondria function a lot alike, but they're actually ATP synthase is backwards. It's, it's the hydrogen ions are flowing in opposite directions. But the effect is the same. The concentration gradient difference in hydrogen ions is being used to provide the energy, the free energy, to phosphorylate ATP. All right, so our next video cast is going to look and see what happens with this ATP energy and this NADPH that the light reactions have produced. And we're going to look at this part right here, where you actually are going to be involving carbon dioxide. All right, now notice that also the light reactions are producing oxygen, because remember, the electrons are originally coming from water molecules. So that frees up free oxygen, which is the waste gas here. All right, thank you for listening.